Uh, I introduced a bill a few weeks back with Senators Markey and Duckworth, the Care for Long COVID Act, to really focus on the sizable percentage of Americans who've had COVID who are dealing with long COVID symptoms. I'm one of them. Thankfully, my symptoms are minor. But to basically um, provide support to them in four ways patient registry of information so that we're gathering data about patient experiences. That'll help us with point two, research into causes and cures. Point three, disseminating the information that we gain through that research to providers, employers, and especially individuals who are dealing with long COVID and their families. And then pillar four, provide support, whether it's to help somebody to determine whether they could make a claim for social security disability or what kind of a treatment, or maybe there might be a, a medical trial that they could participate in to see if they can get relief. How can we support patients? I'm happy to say that President Biden and his team uh, announced a long COVID plan yesterday and included many of the elements of the bill that we introduced, and that's very, very promising. And I think that will give us momentum both in getting the bill passed, but also making sure in appropriations discussion that the funding for items, and particularly this patient support and research. Those are the two big funding items that we get ample funding to make sure we're you know, doing what we need to do by those who are, who are dealing with this long after their kind of live case of COVID is over. If you've had COVID or think you have and your body feels different than before, you should see your doctor and, and talk to your doctor because it turns out that COVID can have neurological symptoms, cardiac symptoms, pulmonary symptoms, muscle fatigue, muscle pain and fatigue symptoms. So there's a lot of different symptoms. What I have is a nerve tingling sensation. When I got COVID in March of 2020, I didn't have standard symptoms. I had more like a, a blizzard of allergic reactions. Um, but one of them was sort of instantaneously, I felt like all my nerve endings were tingling, like I've described it as it was if they'd all had five cups of coffee and it's 24 seven for the last two years. It's not painful. It's not, it's not debilitating. I can work. I can exercise. I can sleep. It's just, I know what my body felt like for 62 and a half years and I know what it's felt like for the last two and it's not gone back to how it felt before. Um, this, this nerve tingling, which uh, some physicians call it a neuropathy, is not the most common symptom, but it is reported fairly frequently by those who have long COVID. Sometimes it's really intense in hands and feet. Some, for people like me, it's everywhere. Other neurological symptoms, loss of taste or smell. Sometimes that is during COVID and then taste or smell comes back, but it's not uncommon for people who've had COVID to have not regained their sense of taste or smell. Governor Northam, the, uh, the previous Virginia governor, had COVID more than a year ago. He still has not regained his sense of taste or smell. So, um, and in the neurological space, there's also, also those who develop super intense light sensitivity in their vision or tinnitus ringing in the air that's very annoying in their hearing. So you see how COVID is not affecting your ears or your nerve endings, but it's affecting the way your brain processes sensory input from your five senses. Um, a, a fairly common, um, uh, commonly noted post-COVID symptom is heart rate variability. So people who didn't have any varying heart rate before find a heart rate that randomly goes up or down. That's been seen pretty commonly. Uh, I think the technical term for it is tachycardia. Uh, and many have seen that after COVID. The, the thing that's probably the, that I hear the most is fatigue and confusion. So people who were super fit, great athletes, marathon runners before COVID have never really recovered their energy level. Um, hard to walk around the block or climb a flight of stairs without being too tired. Their energy level stays low. Um, and then there's a neurological com component that often combines with that, which is sort of confusion, difficulty focusing, staying on task. That, that's kind of referred to by many in the long COVID community as brain fog that persists for a long period of time. So it, it has a lot of different consequences. I guess the thing I would say is if you've had COVID or think you have, and you kind of feel like your body just hasn't gone back to normal, that, that's the way I realize something's up because even though my symptoms are mild, they're not painful, I just knew what my body felt like. And after I had COVID, it never really went back to normal. You should go see your primary physician. Um, and even though we don't fully understand some of the causes, some of the conditions like heart racing or neuropathies, they have treatments 
for those who suffer from those things not related to COVID, and some of those treatments might actually work to help you with your symptoms. But I think it would start with your primary physician.